is the cheapest new BMW, in fact, junk. We're gonna talk about some of the good, the bad, and the ugly, as well as share some of the ratings, talk about some of the critical key areas that you can expect were failure modes, and as well, we're gonna give this a summary with the quality experience so you too can enjoy how this vehicle is actually built. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. BMW's clearly gone through a lot of teething problems in the last 15 or 20 years with a lot of problematic drivetrains and areas of concern. Obviously, coolant leaks are no noon issue for a lot of BMWs. Oil leaks from pan gaskets as well as the valve cover gaskets as well as the infamous oil filter housing gaskets. That's a common area for a lot of BMWs. We can't forget the N63, which was their twin turbo V8 4.4 liter and a hot V would melt down valve guides like a gummy bear. It also consumed batteries like it was going out of style and generally has gone through many variations and iterations to the point where now it's at least livable, livably reliable. Now, of course, we had the wonderful N20. That was a glorious four-cylinder turbo engine that was eating up timing chains. It would also consume oil filters like they were going out of style and clearly it wasn't a great engine. We also can't forget about the infamous S85 V10. Rod bearings were gone at 70 or 80,000 miles, so it would eat its bottom end as well as the S65, which is the small baby version V8 of the same engine. Clearly there's been a lot of problems. How about the infamous N47? Don't get me started. BMW has struggled in the last X amount of years. And of such, a lot of the ratings have dropped down. But let's talk about what things have been happening lately. First of all, RepairPal takes an average running rating of a lot of their BMWs in the last X amount of years. And clearly, BMW is going to cost you about $968 annually for servicing. RepairPal also considers the average BMW only about a 2.5 out of 5 in terms of overall reliability and about 0.9 times per year you would expect an unexpected catastrophic type failure and a reason to take your BMW into the shop. Sadly, 15 to 16 percent of those visits were massive costs. In other words, something big, something ugly, something expensive. So clearly BMW has had some struggles along the way, but they've made some changes in the last few years. And now some of those changes have escalated BMW to a point now. Have you seen Consumers Reports ratings lately? Yes. In fact, now they're arm wrestling with the likes of Lexus, Toyota, and Mazda for the top slots for overall reliability amongst all car brands. Yes, BMW has come a long ways in terms of overall predicted reliability. And this BMW is a late model that may in fact be one of those contributing factors to get that reliability rating elevated. Have you also seen What Car? Have you heard of that site? Yes, they did a survey and actually ranked the 2 Series BMW as number 5 out of 15 overall of all brands question and their reliability. So clearly the 2 Series is a little better than some of the older school BMWs. I actually in fact owned one of those N54 engines. That was their twin turbo 3 liter 6 cylinder engine. Brutal. High pressure fuel pumps, fuel injectors, turbos, wastegate rattle, electric water pumps that would fail and coolant lines galore. That that car kept you in the red every single day. Every week you'd be under the hood flipping up parts, changing parts because of some kind of leak or noise or check engine light. It was a brutal car. But yes, things have changed a little bit. And what's under the hood of this glorious new BMW, which of course we're talking about here is the 230i right here. We're looking at, that means it's a two series. The 30 means it's essentially the four cylinder engine because you either have the 230 or the 240. And this one's the X-Drive. Of course, that means it's got all wheel drive. So it's practical for snowy driving and summer driving weather. So what in fact is that engine? Well, let's take a closer look and understand how this engine that's under that hood actually in fact makes the power that it does and has improved reliability. Let's take a look. Let's pop the hood. Whoa. There we have in fact the two liter turbo four cylinder engine. It's called a twin power turbo. No, it's not twin turbo, it's twin power turbo because it's a twin scroll single turbocharged engine. Two liter, it makes about 247 or 248 horsepower and about 258 pound feet of twist, which makes this car very lively, very peppy. And in a smaller chassis car like this, makes it actually quite entertaining. Yes, in fact, this latest B48 engine that BMW internally calls it, 
is much improved from the outgoing N20 engine. So if you're looking for a late model BMW with a four cylinder engine starting around 2016, 17, you're likely going to find this engine in there and that is drastically improved over some of the four cylinder power plants in the BMW world. Yes, in fact, many people are now touting that BMW has really two major drivetrains that are ultra reliable. The B48, which is what we're looking at right here, which is ultra durable and it seems to be holding its own, as well as the B58, which is the turbo six cylinder engine. The big brother of this, which is three liters displacement, also a single turbo twin scroll, and is clearly showing a lot more promise than some of the outgoing drivetrains. Much better than the N54 and even slightly better than the N55 just before it. So clearly here we have now a drivetrain that has gone leagues in terms of reliability over the older versions. But let's look at some of the pieces under the hood here and try to understand what are some of the problem areas of some of these late model BMWs. Well, looking under here, I'll tell you right now, right here, BMW, we still have those silly little clips. Of course, those are those snap fittings. And anybody who knows and has owned BMW for a while, like this brand, will know that a lot of these snap fittings, they're nice when they're installation. Obviously, they have a snap ring right there. They click on their key. They can only go in one direction. But after multiple thousands of cooling cycles, heating, cooling, heating, cooling, that plastic starts to mold together with the fitting that it's attached to, and then it becomes very difficult to take apart. And they also tend to split, leak, and you'll have problems with that. You'll notice we have those types of fittings right here. We have those types of fittings right here. And if you look down there, you'll notice the same type of fittings down that go to your radiator and all the other cooling components. So clearly that will still likely be a little bit of an issue as soon as you start getting some miles on here. But of course, there's your turbo down there, and that turbocharger seems to be holding up fairly well in a lot of these BMWs. You don't hear turbos themselves being the big key failure point for a lot of these cars. But generally speaking, the way they've even configured it, improved on the cooling, the rigidity of the crankcase, the fueling system, the turbocharged system, and the overall design has just come together as a better package than some of the outgoing engines. Of course, you still have the infamous ZF 8-speed automatic transmission coupled to this engine, and it's just a wonderful transmission to drive. It's quick shifting, it's responsive, it knows always what the driver wants to do, and clearly, even more importantly, it's reliable. The transmissions in these modern-day BMWs are almost bulletproof. So what are some of the common well-known failures of some of these 230 BMWs? Well, for example, I'll show you one. You're driving along, minding your old business, and all of a sudden, oh, stalls. And then you'll get an illumination on the dashboard telling you that there's an issue. And some of the reasons why that engine might actually stall out or die altogether has to do with the fuel pump generally located pulling fuel from the fuel tank bringing that fuel delivery to the engine actually because that's what it takes to run a vehicle air and fuel mixture go in for combustion boom gets that car running without that fuel it doesn't run so that was clearly something that popped up back in about 2014 how about some of the other issues? Well, let's take a look inside here and I'll explain. Well, the airbags, of course, a lot of BMWs have suffered the Takata airbag syndrome, but it's more than that. It's the actual airbag module, which clearly can cause a problem. And nobody wants problems with the airbags. You don't need that thing blowing in your face. Another issue was the driver's seat anchor bolts down there were clearly not safe. Back in the earlier generations of the two series, this vehicle wasn't necessarily fastened in the best way. And there was a risk that the seat could come loose in the event of an accident. Clearly not a safe status, but that was a recall and should have been sorted out in earlier generation of cars. Another thing to look for is tucked back here. What are we looking at? Seat belts right here. Yes, in fact, we have this beautiful seat belt. What is this? Well, down there you have the hook, but up here is where it releases. It comes out of there. But this mechanism has been known to be problematic, especially in a colder weather where that doesn't necessarily release or retract or it kind of hangs up and you can't actually operate it properly. That was a known issue and BMW sorted out that. We also close that door and we look down here, rear axle bolts. So as you look under here, definitely rear axle bolts, bolts and the supporting members were clearly not up to snuff. And there's a risk of that rear suspension system coming loose. So the axle bolts were clearly something that had to be inspected and it was a problem. And another thing was the crankshaft sensor. The crankshaft sensor is located its feedback into that engine to help it run. And the crank sensor is essentially what gives the engine that information about top 
dead center. In other words, when that's piston number one, cylinder number one's at its top of the stroke, of course, it has to send that signal. That's the only way that the engine programming in the computer system know where that engine is so it knows when to fuel it, when to trigger it, and ignite it. So unfortunately, without that crank sensor working, the vehicle can go into limp mode or just won't crank or will just crank and won't start. That clearly has been an issue. That's always been an issue for some Mercedes as well, but clearly some of these BMWs has had that problem. Exhaust gas recirculation, the EGR valve could leak and be a problem there as well. And we know that BMWs and EGR valves, there was a big recalls for some of those problematic EGR valves back in the day. And then another one, which comes under here, but it affects this is the power steering. Yes, power steering has been a problem for some of these as well, where they just prematurely fail. The pump stops working properly, and then the steering becomes Joe Armstrong steering. Oh, 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 that just doesn't want to turn. Oh. So clearly there was a time when car brands like Toyota and Honda own the reliability ratings. But now, in fact, BMW was very innovative. They were using turbocharging many years ago. While they experienced a lot of teething problems back in the day, they've now gotten to a point where they've worked out a lot of the bugs. A lot of their turbocharged engines are a lot more reliable than they were about 10 years ago. And unfortunately, even the likes of Toyota and Lexus and even Honda now are stepping up into the turbocharged regime. Think about the new Honda and that 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder engine. Lots of people know about the oil and fuel dilution issues there. So clearly, a lot of these other manufacturers are now having to step into the turbocharger arena because they have to maintain more competition. A lot of the manufacturers are now driven to either go electric or hybrid and even the internal combustion engines that they run have to be smaller displacement with turbos. They're forced that way. The regulators, government, the manufacturers, everybody is putting down the heat for all the other competition to start using smaller engines, less displacement more pressure, more turbos, superchargers, hybrids. So all that technology is going to start closing the gap. Brands like BMW is now competing with the likes of Honda for reliability. Will it ever be better than a Honda for reliability? I don't know, time will tell. But we've already seen some stumbles with Honda. And now even with the Honda Accords and some of their other cars, they've had some issues lately where BMW is starting to iron out some of the wrinkles. This brand new 230 BMW is clearly a relatively reliable little hot rod. A lot of owners are reporting that they love this car. It's fun to drive, but it doesn't necessarily break the bank. It's not like driving one of the big twin turbo V8s or V12 power plants. No, this car is actually relatively affordable to run, maintain and operate. And because it's got that B48 engine or upgradable to the B58 engine, this has one of two of the most reliable BMW drivetrains in their marketplace today. So in fact, is this entry level BMW 230i a piece of junk? Well, let's give it the full quality experience from outside, inside, and then you make your own determination. We'll talk about it at the end. So what do you think? What do you think? The squeaks, the rattles, do you think that's a problem? How about the way the engine sounds? Remember, that engine you can also five in the five series. Five series cars are mid-level for BMW. So a lot of the features that include in this vehicle are also coming for some of the more premium versions of the BMW lineups. Of course, the only difference is you don't get all the fringe benefits. You do away with some of the extras with this base model vehicle like this. For example, like the paddle shifters, some of the heated components, the back seats are a little more Spartan. There's a little less glass sunroof on top as opposed to the more premium versions of the brand. But I would say the quality feels very much the same, what you're finding in the two series like this, or what you'll typically find in the five series, seven series, and beyond. What you're gonna find, the types of materials are what you're gonna find in all of the versions. So what do you think about the quality? Do you in fact think this 230 Coupe X-Drive is actually junk? 
Well, you be the judge of that. Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear that. And with all of that said, check that out. You're gonna love it. That's actually Mercedes versus Toyota Camry quality experience comparison. Just in case you're truly wondering what it's like to compare luxury versus non-luxury. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll catch you real soon. Bye-bye. You don't have the paddle shifter type floppy. You don't have the shiftable paddle shaft shifters on the paddle shifters on the flop paddle floppies. It, it,